Hi everyone. Thank you for joining our session today. I'm Keita from Qing. We are Tokyo-based startup driven by a, a team of computer scientists. Uh, we build Sunrise, which is a startup database in Japan to connect Japanese companies and innovative startups from around the world to create more, more collaborations. Today, I will be moderating the session how the Japanese startups to uh, build smart and sustainable cities and with guest speakers, Kobayashi-san, who is the corporate vice president at Akipa, which is a peer-to-peer -peer sharing platform for car parking. And Mariko, the co-founder of Maimizu, Japan's first water refill app with a mission to reduce consumption of plastic bottles and connecting people via smartphone app to free refill stations across Japan and globally. To build smart city, Japan harnesses technology to stay ahead of global city and improve lives and livelihoods. Also, environmentalism and sustainability have come to form a significant cornerstone of Japan's global image and soft power in recent years. So, I'd like to start with Mariko. Uh, what's the current situation and, out and outlook on plastic waste management or recycling in Japan? Um, thank you, and thank you for having me today. Um, so, yeah, I mean, in Japan, as in much of the rest of the world, there are different ways that we deal with plastic waste. Um, Japan is generally kind of has a reputation globally for having very high recycling rates and it's true the sort of the collection systems are great you know people are wonderful at splitting up their um, mm -hmm. trash so you have you know pet bottles you have right, different right. types of plastic you know metals um, but actually the reality is not that you know when you put a something in the recycling it turns back into a beautiful product all the time mm -hmm. so for example in Japan the the official recycling rate for plastics is 84 85% um, but actually about 50 to 70% of that is actually burnt mm. um, so in the rest of the world it's called thermal recovery um, where it's the kind of the last resort um, you put things um, into an incinerator and the energy that's extracted from that is you know used to power other things um, but it's not really recycling uh, it's not coming out as another you know plastic product mm. um, so that's kind of the reality that we face so although a lot of things are called recycled um, it's not necessarily being recycled in the way that we might think about it um, so that's where we are and you know there are it's generally speaking globally um, thermal recycling isn't included in the in official recycling stats mm. um, so there's a little bit of a difference there in terms of how um, we're seen here in Japan with compared to the rest of the world um, but yeah our goal is to reduce the amount that's going into the recycling system in the first place so that we mm. can um, you know we spend less on the recycling too. Great great thank you and uh, within four months since it, your launch in September 2019. Yep. And it, uh, the app has gathered around 20,000 downloads across 30 countries, right? So, how much Miami is grown now? Any, if you have any interesting milestone to share? Yeah, so exactly. We, we launched just, uh, just over a year ago. So, it's been mm -hmm. about 13 months. Um, in that time, um, yeah, we've had about six, we've had over 60,000 people download the app, um, not just here in Japan, but in, in about 40 countries around the world. Uh, we very purposely made it um, both English and Japanese from the very start. All of our communications have been in both languages because whilst we know there's a big issue here in Japan, this is, you know, it's not a issue just for this country. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted it also to have global appeal. Um, I mean, in terms of the, the, the milestones for us, so we're very much a, a platform and mm -hmm. it's a co-created, this sort of a crowdsourced database. So we don't, you know, make a service. We don't go and set up refill spots. What we do is encourage our users to add, you know, information of the public refill spots that are available mm -hmm. and also for shops and businesses to sign up. And they can say, look, hey, we're a cafe. You can come in, even if you're not a customer. And if you have a bottle like this, you can um, come and refill for free. And we've had um, about 650, maybe close to 700 um, shops and businesses oh. sign up on the Great. platform. Um, we haven't done any sales to them because we're a very wow. small team. Um, so it's more they found out about what we're doing and they're like, this is awesome. Like, this is something that we can do and mm -hmm. join the platform. So, yeah, and we've been, you know, we're, we're, our mission is really that 
we can't solve this problem alone. It really requires a lot of partnership and a lot of collaboration. Um, so mm. we've worked with local governments like Corbe City, for example, run a pilot project with them to see if we can increase the number of refill spots in the city for them. Um, you know, we work with a lot of big companies um, who are either, you know, adding their ref like, for example, we have all stores of IKEA and Audi the car company mm. across the country signed up as refill spots. Um, but we're also working collaboratively with a lot of companies um, to, to find creative ways to solve this um, issue around cool. plastic and consumption. So yeah, that's what we've been up to for the last 13 months or so. Great, great, great. So which kind of businesses mo registered mo mostly in New York? Registered? Mm -hmm. as, um, as a water station. Yeah, I mean, I guess naturally there are a lot of cafes and restaurants mm. because a lot of them already have, you know, they serve water to their customers. Mm. They might even have like a, you know, a, a refill jug or something available. Right. Um, so there are a number of, of uh, yeah, shops, restaurants, but also, I mean, some really surprising places like hairdressers, hair salons, um, wow. like I said, car dealerships, um, like Audi and then uh yeah i mean just i mean not just in japan as well you know we've had a cafe in kenya signing up mm. um, some really interesting places it's really fun to see who's coming on board the platform as well great, <laughs> our policy great. is if you if you can provide safe drinking water to to our users then you're welcome uh, to sign up to the platform great interesting story thanks and uh i i guess it's not uh especially in Japan program, but uh, some people are not uh, aware of, of the issue, which is plastic waste. Mm. And mm. how does my MIS uh, platform attract people who are not strongly aware of the issue? Yeah, it's, that's very true. And, you know, our, our early adopters were really people who already had a bottle and they were already frustrated that they couldn't find mm. places to refill. Uh, but, you know, we have moved beyond that, obviously. And, um, it's a combination of a few things. Community for us is really, really important. Mm. Um, you know, I've seen in other countries, for example, my, my dad is I, from the UK and mm -hmm. I've seen in the UK, like the number of people who have started to carry a bottle is so much higher than before. And mm. I think there's a, a strong element of peer pressure. Like if your friends are carrying mm. one or if people you respect are carrying one, then it becomes, you know, you have an opportunity to think about it and maybe to emulate that. Um, so we really focus on community through our social media, through running online events, and now even sort of beach cleans, stuff that we can do within the safety of, you know, being outdoors and spread out in this kind of <laughs> difficult time um, mm -hmm. to really bring people together. Um, so that's one way. Um, and really our approach is to make things fun, um, engaging, and, you know, enjoyable. Like, I don't think many of us, you know, change our behavior because we're scared about something you know if we're talking about climate change if we're talking about plastic consumption it's very easy to say oh we must give up everything we must sacrifice everything mm. but I don't find that necessarily always is the most effective form and, and our approach is to show a vision to say that this imagine like what it could be like if we mm. if we live in a truly sustainable city imagine if you could go around and, and all you need is this bottle and then you don't have to provide like create all of this waste and I think people really engage with that and and, you know, we run challenges. We're working with companies to see how many pet bottles can they save in the course of a month. And we've just had a big company in Japan have just under 3,000 of their employees competing mm. against each other to see who can save the biggest number of pet bottles. And, uh -huh. you know, this is a way that people who've never thought about the issue of plastic right, can, right. can compete with their colleagues and be like, oh, this is really fun. Like, <laughs> maybe I can, you mm. know, if I do this for a month, maybe it will change my habit in, in a long term as well. So mm. you know, our approach is to have fun whilst we're doing these things. And, and hopefully that kind of, you know, encourages more and more people to get involved. Right. Thanks. And, uh, and you have not only a platform, but also you have online stores and also you have electricity service, right? Mm -hmm. how, how does these solutions work? Yeah, so um, our approach is really that, you know, the pet bottles is just the first step. Um, when we talk about, you know, social environmental problems, you know, climate change, plastic, these are such big issues, it's often really hard to know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we see, you know, reduction of pet bottles as kind of a gateway that people can say, oh, this is a really simple thing I can do. 
um, and you can see the impact of what you're doing. Um, but we know that there's a lot more that we all have to do as individuals or as companies. Um, so our goal through, you know, partnerships and the other activities we do is to spread that and to give mm. people kind of a, um, the options that they can, can move on to. Um, so, for example, Miami Zidenki, we collaborated with a, a renewable energy company um, mm -hmm. to introduce our users and people who are interested in this topic to a really easy switch they can make, which is from, you know, fossil fuel powered electricity to a company that guarantees up to 100 percent renewable energy. Um, so for us, it's creating a co-branded um, service that we can introduce people to. Um, similarly with the online shop we had a lot of people saying it's really cool that you can find places to refill but I don't have a bottle that works for me or I don't have something that I like mm. um, and we we decided that we really like these bottles <laughs> they have mm. the handle normally I don't have the lid um, so you know we have this one is is an early version we have but we have one with a small logo we have one with different illustrations and mm. it's really again the whole idea of making this an attractive option if if you can have something that you really enjoy using uh, we think it will spread. We've had so many of our users saying, you know, just by mm. having something with our logo on it, it gives them a chance to talk to other people about it too. Um, mm. So that's, it's one way for us to also spread the message to other people too. Great. I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Great vision. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to start with Kobesan. Yep. Uh, can you share a quick overview of parking space sharing business in Japan. Okay, uh, first thank you for inviting, inviting me. And uh, my English is not so fluent compared to Mariko, so please let me know if you couldn't catch. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before, you know, uh, showing overview of uh, the uh, parking space sharing business in Japan, uh, please let me explain about our company and service, services. So sure. Akipa, yep. Akipa is an online service that allows you to book an available space in a monthly parking lot or an apartment building parking lot on a 15 minute or a daily basis. So in other words, uh, it's uh, it's parking lot, parking lot version of their Airbnb or mm -hmm. other sharing economy services. So, let me explain our business model in, in, a, in a little more detail. Uh, first, a uh, user books a uh, parking space online and pays the parking fee to, uh, keep, uh, to us in, in advance via online payment. Mm -hmm. After the user has used the parking space, the uh, parking fee minus a commission fee is paid to the parking space owners as revenue. So the advantages for users are that uh, they can use the parking lot at a reasonable price because there are no capital expenditures in the parking lot. Uh, they, can book, uh, uh, they can book the parking lot in advance and mm -hmm. they can make smooth cashless payments. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the advantages for parking space owners are that they can easily rent out their idle spaces through Akipa the, uh, and the generate revenue without any special hustle. So the first parking space sharing business in Japan is the Nokisaki parking launched by Nokisaki in 2012. Mm. Akipa was launched in 2014 as the second. Mm. Uh, since then, several startups have launched similar services and since 2016, uh, more and more major companies such as Times24, uh, mm. Mitsui Fudo-san, and SoftBank uh, have penet penetrated into this market. Mm. But uh, we expect to see a further expansion of the parking space sharing business in Japan in the future. Great. Thank you. Um, as you mentioned, you launched your platform in 2014. And mm -hmm. uh, you gathered 1.3 million users. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, the, how much has, has Akipa grown now in terms of users or spaces or new cities or new products? Any, if you have any interesting points to share. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, as of uh, October, I mean, uh, this month, 2020, 
Akip has about two million customers. Wow! Great. <laughs> Sorry for yeah. my yeah misinformation. <laughs> and about uh, forty thousand parking locations uh, in mm. total. And then mainly uh, we have uh, parking locations uh, in uh, Tokyo area and mm -hmm. Osaka area mm -hmm. and uh, Hokkaido, uh, Fukuoka, and so on. So. In terms of the parking location development, uh, in addition to available spaces at private residences and monthly parking lots, uh, we have built partnership with a variety of companies and organizations, including uh, electric railway companies, hotels, uh, sport teams, and municipalities. As a result, we have established the number, uh, number one position in this parking space sharing service industry in Japan right now. In October 2019, uh, we entered into a capital and business alliance with Sampo Holdings, uh, mm -hmm. which is a listed company in uh, Tokyo, Tokyo Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. Now more than uh, 500 insurance, insurance, insurance agencies under the uh, Sampo Group are using their nationwide network to develop Akipa's parking location. Mm. In addition, to address customers' concern about the uh, sharing economy services, uh, which is very, you know, uh, new style, new, new model services. So the Sompo Group created a new insurance program, uh, especially for the parking space sharing business. And we, Akipa, has signed, sign, signed up for it. Mm. Great, great story. And uh, so can you tell us about uh, how, how the COVID-19 affected your business? I guess, yeah. uh, I guess there are many uh, impact, positive or negative impact for many industry, but uh, especially for your business, the car parking yeah. sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, thank you for asking, yeah. It very a good question. So, yeah, uh, actually, uh, there, there, there was, uh, there are both, you know, uh, positive impact and then uh, uh, negative mm -hmm. impact. Mm -hmm. So, but, but still, you know, it's very a uh, big impact for us, for for, right. for our business. So, uh, well, so our business model itself didn't change even in this. Uh, you know, COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. However, the user of our parking spaces uh, for concerts or uh, and sport, uh, sports games, etc., you know, like an event, uh, mm -hmm. has declined uh, declined so much. On the on the on the other hand, uh, those who had to go out for work, even in even in this pandemic, uh, used our parking spaces a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in Tokyo, in particular, mm -hmm. uh, the use of parking for commuting purposes uh, in increased uh, four times uh, comparing uh, February, you know, before oh, wow. uh, pandemic and, uh, you know, comparing in February and May, it's, you know, uh, before mm -hmm. and after a pandemic. Right. So we believe uh, this is because a lot of people choose to use cars instead of public tra transportation in order mm. to avoid contact contacting uh, other uh, contacting other people as mm. much as possible it's, right it, it, like like you know three fees mm. Mm. right right I, I totally agree actually I started commute with bicycle instead of mm. train right. Africa yeah mm. great story yeah please please, please, please try Akipa next time yeah, yeah, sure, I will. <laughs> so thank you for sharing both. Uh, so it's a final question for you, to both of you guys, and uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, looking beyond the future, what are the existing challenges or barriers to, to build a sustainable or circular society and smart cities in Japan? Mm -hmm. And uh, can I start with Kobayashi-san? Yep. Uh, so as I mentioned pre uh, previously, so mm -hmm. 
uh, the uh, share, sharing economy business itself is very new, a new mm. wish for uh, Japanese people. So a sense of reliability is an issue not only in parking lots, but also in the use of sharing service, uh, services between individual, individuals, I, I believe. So in a survey about the, about, about the sharing, economy, uh, sharing economy by individuals, the most common response from uh, both user side and then provide, provide, provider side of goods and services is concern about how to respond to accidents or pro problems. Mm -hmm. So, so as, as I mentioned uh, before, so that, that, uh, that, that's why we created uh, the new uh, insurance program and then uh, we signed up for it. So uh, as a re result, so uh, it, is, uh, the, uh, it is the most important uh, mm -hmm. to uh, how to reduce uh, a sense of, or you know, uh, mm, how to reduce Con, uh, con, uh, the people's concern about uh, the uh, sh share uh, the sharing services. Mm -hmm. Right. And how do you think, uh, Mariko san Um. Yeah, it's a good question. Um. The reason we one of the reasons we launched my music in the first place was because um. You know, we'd been working with a lot of companies um trying to implement circular economy models or to mm -hmm. progress this idea of a circular economy in their industry. And so much of the feedback we got through workshops or, you know, consulting projects was that, um, you know, the consumer isn't asking for it. So mm -hmm. there's a limit to what they can do. So, you know, a mm -hmm. lot of these companies have tried something new and they had failed or like it didn't work out for them. And there was a sense that like the market isn't there yet. Um, and I think, you know, there are obviously very creative things you can do. Like there are so many companies who with very smart marketing campaigns have like created demand for something that just didn't exist, you know, mm. a few years ago, even like whether you're looking at Uber or like Starbucks in Japan, which everyone said, you know, it's no way it's going to work because you can't smoke in it. <laughs> and then right. now we, we have Starbucks everywhere here. So, you know, there's creative things that you can do, uh, but I think certainly um, creating and then visualizing that customer demand Mm -hmm. um, and making sure that they, they then have the products and services available to them that can help this transition. Um, so, you know, with my music, we're very focused on it, creating numbers and showing just how many people are asking for refills and building that network. And I think once we can do that, you know, the companies that were saying, oh, we're not really sure, is there a demand for, you know, refill spots or like, you know, non-plastic alternatives? Mm you know, we can actually show them that those people exist. Um, so I think that's really critical. And, you know, to Kobayashi's point earlier, you know, that it is still new and people are still mm, yes. figuring out what it looks like. It's like, mm -hmm. what is sharing economy? What is a circular <laughs> economy? Like, what does right. it mean? And yeah. so I think that the more examples and the more case studies we can show mm -hmm. and, you know, for us, we're a small entity. Um, what we can do is be really flexible and try and, you know, do the risky things that maybe the bigger companies can't do. And then we can work with them and say, cool, mm. okay, well, let's, let's make this together. Um, and to make it a little bit less risky for the bigger mm. companies and local governments who are maybe struggling a little bit. So yeah, certainly a lot of challenges in that space, but I feel like, you know, we're starting to see more examples and, mm. and hopefully an increasing consumer demand as well for the, for the more sustainable and circular alternatives out there. Mm, right. Yeah. So thank you for sharing uh, the insightful vision and story. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also, I'd like to thank you Kobayasan and Mariko-san again for your wonderful sharing and also to our audience. And uh, I hope you, you enjoyed our session and uh, I hope you joining our uh, these activities in the new future and uh, finally goodbye and uh, have a great conference thank you thank you thank you so much <laughs>